This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. And this is the show where we talk to people in and around independent professional wrestling. And you can check out a lot of uh, uh, the past interviews and more over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Check out all the past Indie Mayhem shows and uh, our other shows, the Wrestling Mayhem Show, the Raw Wrap-Up, and whatever else might be coming up as we uh, talk about. Who knows what wrestling promotions are coming in 2019 at this point, damn it, as we're recording here in the first week of January. Uh, but you never know. I don't even know what shows we may have watched by the time you hear this one. But uh, you can also support um, a lot of the people that we talk to over at IndieWrestling.us and the Indie Wrestling uh, Network. Uh, a lot of them are featured on a lot of the promotions that we work with over there. And, of course, um, you can see when they're coming to your area, if, especially if you're in the Pittsburgh area, at PittsburghWrestling.com. we got a great calendar over there so you can find out what you're doing. Uh, about every show, about an hour drive from Pittsburgh is featured on there. Uh, sorry, our friends in Erie uh, <laughs> with the Revenge Pro. But, um, you know, we might do some road trip features on there as well. So with us this week, he, he's not new to the show because he actually, I guess you made your debut at the STD Christmas special recently, right? I, I did. I tagged along with a uh, chess flexor and crashed the party. Yes, you did. I did. You yes. did. So did uh, LaRusso. So I wasn't alone. And played a little roll the dice, pay the price. I was scared because you never know what uh, I was really concerned chess flexor is going to come yeah. up with. Yes. Yes. He's sick in the mind. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but Jason Tyler is with us, otherwise known as the Sexy Fireman, mm -hmm. or Five Alarm. Fire, yes. Five Alarm Fire, sorry. Yes, Five Alarm Fire, Sexy Fireman. Well, I don't know what it's going to be brought up next, but I'm sure 29th, we still got 12 months left in the year. You kind of so. have a creative team behind you, it seems. I do, and I have not a creative bone in my body. It's That's good. Else. That's good, <laughs> but you can run with it. That's good. You're, you're, you're taking the feedback, and yeah. you're rolling with it. We'll, we'll get into the, 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 the firemen and, and everything, but first, uh, we like a little icebreaker, um, other than pay the price, roll the dice, uh, here on the show. What is your earliest memory of pro wrestling? So, when I was growing up... Um, my first memory was Eric Bischoff being announced as general manager of Monday Night Raw by Vince McMahon. Uh, see, now, I don't know if I saw that on DVD and that <laughs> left like an early imprint on my mind. The first thing I remember watching on TV was, so it must have been 04 and uh, it was Undertaker and Booker T. Like it was mm -hmm. Smackdown and my dad was flipping through the channels, turned it on to, it was still on UPN, uh, the rings filled with smoke, and then I think Undertaker was getting in the ring. Booker rose up from the smoke and hit him with an urn, and then my dad flipped the channel, and I'm like, what the hell? Like, I was watching that. <laughs> and then, uh, well, wrestling was first introduced to me in first grade, so we're by the cubby holes, and my friend Robbie puts me in a bear hug. And it's like, of course, I didn't use this language. I'm like, what the fuck is going? Why are you? Why do you have me in a bear hug? He's like, I was, I saw it on TV. Well, that's great. And he's told me about the show on Monday nights. So I turned it on and I've watched it for like the last 14 years. I want, I want to point out. So you know, given that time frame, I'm thinking like at least he went for a bear hug. And I don't remember a bear hug being really popular in the in the 2000s uh, or the 90s. Uh, at least he's not like hitting you with a stunner or something, right? No, no. <laughs> that we 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 grew up in the post attitude, ruthless aggression era, mm. is is what I watched. So no five knuckle shuffle or anything like that. No. You didn't get introduced to that. No. <laughs> awesome. So what you know? How did you go from you know watching it, being into it, and kind of growing there to to like deciding you wanted to get into the ring? I've all like from the minute I started watching wrestling, I knew. I had to be a wrestler. It is my life goal to be a professional wrestler. So 2016, it was the summer of 2016, and I sent uh, Justin Plummer an email. And I was uh, working one day, 
and he responded to the email about tryouts. And the schedule was already out that far, so I fought and I pleaded and I was able to switch dates because I had my tryout September 14th, 2016. And uh, it was a experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, I get there and the first people I meet were Mandime and Jamie Jameson. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, they put us through the, the rigors and... Uh, uh, my performance was less than stellar and, um, uh, I tried my best. I got through it. I made it to the end, but, uh, I would, I didn't, I wasn't expecting them to say, you know, come back next month and we'll start training because it wasn't the best. There was a lot of room for improvement. So, um, the end of the class comes around and, uh, I was trained by Chris LaRusso and Andrew Palace. So Chris gets us all around and says, you all made it to the next tryout and he started pointing out what all of us can do better and he told me what I can do better and for the next 11 months I trained every Monday night uh trying just trying to get better awesome awesome you had a you kind of had an interesting uh introduction too um if I'm remembering uh for your first match oh with bulk yeah yeah so Literally, you you have all the footage. You could probably yep. go back and watch it. You could make like a twenty minute video with all the times that Bulk Nasty messed with me when I was doing my uh, security gig, from scooping me to slapping me to sitting on me. Um, at when was it? Aftershock in May. Mm-hmm. Um, he was wrestling Dan Hooven. Dan Hooven did a plancha over the top rope, got caught. Bulk threw him into me. The chair broke, and I hit the back of my head off the guardrail, Oof. and it knocked me for a loop a little bit. So I was like, I shook it off. I'm fine. So later in the night, Team Storm and Justin Plummer got into it. So I'm a part of the pool apart. And someone pushes me, and I hit the back of my head off the ring post and had a very, very bad concussion. Jeez. And it was horrible. I was... Uh, this is just doing security. You haven't, had, you, just you haven't even security. had your first match. I yeah. Even, I even for those who don't know, like and IWC and other promotions do this too. Like they'll put, they'll pretty much post uh, in trainee security, like sitting in a chair in the corners, right? Yeah, just to make sure dues. everybody's cool. Yeah. yeah. And uh, but finished the night. Did ring crew. Felt like garbage. Almost passed out in the back seat <laughs> of a car. But uh, it ain't ballet. It's wrestling. So mm-hmm. even as a security guard. Yeah, you get roughed up. You get a little bit. You get roughed up out there. And of course, that eventually leads to a, a first match. But in the meantime, like you know, in the training and everything, um, you know, what, what kind of really surprised you? you? You talked about that kind of first performance, but uh, really kind of getting in there. Um, what do you mean, like my what surprised me? Yeah, what really surprised you when you started getting in there and doing training? Um. I knew that it was going to be hard, but the cardio sucked. I'm a big guy. Mm -hmm. I've always been a big guy. There's still no excuse to not be in shape, but the cardio was very, very difficult. And it's what I, and it's what I worked on most of the time in the gym. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's gotten better over the years, even though, yeah, two years. So, uh, it's getting better over the year, year and a half or so. And I'm still working on it. Like I said, there's always room for improvement. Mm-hmm. So I'll never stop trying to improve. Awesome. Um, so you had your debut against Bulk. Basically, it was he was bullying. I think we were in Royal Valley. We were, yes. And uh, you ended up getting into a match with him later that night. Yeah. Uh, Chris was wrestling Darren De Niro, and uh, Bulk pushed me off the chair. I pulled the chair out, and then Darren uh, rolled up Chris for the win, and uh Chris goes on the mic and he's, uh, says, you know, I know you've been training at the ICWA training Academy. Well, guess what? Your first match is with bulk tonight. And my, you can see there's pictures. My face was happy whenever I pulled the chair and I had the Oh shit. Look on my face. Whenever he announced <laughs> that, because I know, uh, I had my work cut out for me and, um, you know, I got to live my dream. It was on September 16th, 2017. Uh, and uh, it's a day I'm going to remember forever. It was my first match, and it was very special. And it, 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 what that's about a year from your first tryout. Yeah, uh, two days off from the year, like 
the week that it happened. So nice. it's, it's been pretty cool. So let's talk about yeah, we we kind of talked about it at the beginning. Your sexy fireman is what you've uh, kind of become the no, become known as amongst other monikers. Yeah. Um. You know, you have the fireman thing going on in your presentation. Tell me a little bit of the background about that. So ever since I was a kid, I grew up in a fire hall. Um, my dad was chief. My dad started firefighting when he was fourteen because that's the legal age that you can start as a junior firefighter. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, he's been doing it for like 30 to 40 years, more towards 40, and he was chief for 20 years. So I was always around the fire hall, like when he had to watch us or remember how to do something. So I practically grew up in a fire hall. And the fire hall was like a big frat house. Not in a bad way. Like we're all, they all like to have fun. And mm-hmm. they're, I grew up with guys that were like 16, 17, been in, in firefighting for a year or two, and like, they got that angst about them. And I, I learned a lot and I seen a lot and I'm not going to get into it. Cause that's some, another podcast. Yeah. That's another podcast. That's a rated R part <laughs> podcast. But, uh, no, it was, I've been around firefighting my whole life. So when I was 14, I started, my dad, uh, a fireman still, my brother's a fireman, pretty much everyone, but my mom was a fireman, my two sisters, but they kind of grew out of it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, that's still what I do. I still uh, run fire calls uh, and wrestle. Firefighting and wrestling is my life. That's awesome. So it made sense when you went out there, you wanted to represent that. Yeah. So I'm thinking of a character and I'm thinking of something that it wasn't hard to make people think, well, he's he's just doing a gimmick. No, mm-hmm. it's me times 20, me times 1,000. When I go out there, because I'm really a fireman, and uh, I wanted something close to home that I can like represent. So any every time I bring that helmet out, I wear that helmet to fight fire. I've mm-hmm. gone into fires with that. I've been to car wrecks with that, and I always bring it out with me wherever I go. And it's just like a way to uh, pay respect to that, to everyone who does it, to that part of my life, now that I'm into a new part of my life with wrestling. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, so kind of um, uh, from that, uh, t- tell me about, you know, you, you're kind of like a serious, like you're like representing firemen and everything. You've been having more fun here in more recent months, it seems. Um, I've gotten a lot more comfortable mm-hmm. with who I am. Uh, and I amount that to the like good coaches and people that I've been around from Daniel Hooven. And uh, there was a trip I did earlier this year in June. Uh, I went to Tennessee with Sam Adonis. And uh, he is the most confident person I've ever met in my whole entire life. He does not give a shit about what anyone thinks because he loves <laughs> wrestling. And that's the only thing that matters to him. Mm-hmm. And he brought the confidence out of me for that two days. I went down there, and I uh, first match wasn't that good. Wrestled the next night. I did a whole lot better, he said, with my character work, being more comfortable and twerking. I twerked for the first time in my whole life <laughs> in Tennessee. In the ring. In the ring. and Didn't even have a practice twerk beforehand. I No, I was getting yelled at by the, like everyone. The old ladies in the crowd hated it, and the old guys <laughs> in the crowd hated it. But I loved it because I got a reaction out of them. That's awesome. So you became a twerking fireman after that. I did, yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so th- how did you become the sexy fireman? Was that from that or just... That is chest flexors <laughs> okay. doing. Has his fingerprints all over that one. Yeah. So we were in a car ride, I think, up to Erie or five stars something like that he's like sexy fireman this sexy fireman and this is where we talk about how you kind of have your own creative team behind you yeah and i'm like who the hell is sexy fireman like why do you keep saying that he's like you're the sexy fireman i'm like is there anything sexy about me (laughs) he's like (laughs) and he just gives you that weird look and a nod and i'm like okay Mm -hmm. as as checks the chest does so i guess um bradley ruthers got on to it and he started chanting sexy firemen at the shows. And now it's, I wouldn't say a staple of every time I wrestle, but if Bradley's in the crowd, there's going to be a sexy fireman chant. 
And, uh, you know, that's always entertaining, just hearing it in the ring. And I'm like, oh, I guess. And it's what- a nice introduction. If there's anybody new that doesn't know the deal. Yeah. Well, of course, now you have the tights. I do. Finally, finally got new tights. And uh, they're pretty nice. I'm, I have more gear coming out uh, in the near future. Mm-hmm. Of course, I'm always going to add the Sexy Fireman logo onto it. But no, it beats my first set of gear. Mm-hmm. It really, really does. Tell us, tell us what happened with your first set of gear, for so, those that don't know. So we were talking about it before the show. So it's not very easy finding uh, firefighter singlets. So I Google it, and I'm looking for weeks, and I'm looking for weeks, and I finally find firefighting singlets with the flames and the smoke and the embroidery and the Maltese cross on the center. Mm -hmm. I'm like, finally. I trusted this company with the beginning of my wrestling career. Mm -hmm. I trusted them, but they spelled it wrong, and I didn't look. They betrayed your trust. They betrayed my trust. And spell check. Exactly. And uh, I didn't, I just bought them and threw it on. Oh, it fits awesome. Threw it in the gear bag and waited for my first show to happen. So I'm walking around and people are like, that's spelt wrong. I'm like, no, it isn't. Hey, that's spelt wrong. And then enough people came up to me and told me it was spelt wrong. What did it say on it? It was true heroes. And uh, true was spelt great. Perfect. Good job. 50%. Heroes. Yeah, exactly. Heroes is spelled H E R O S. And that sounded right. There wasn't an apostrophe or anything like that. But it's H E R O E S. And I never heard the end of it. And after, what was it? A year and like a year and a month or two of having that gear, I finally got new gear. And it fits semi fits. And uh, as long as it's spelt right, I didn't care what it said. <laughs> so we got that going so far. That's great. So you're the sexy fireman. You got the twerking going on. And I understand there's rumblings of a calendar. There is. Uh, it's going to be PG-13, so it is safe for the household. <laughs> I love that you're establishing that right off the bat. You do not need uh, parental uh, permission to purchase this. And you don't need to hide it in like a far corner where no one can see it. Uh, or the bathroom. <laughs> Wait, my dad's friend had a motorcycle shop and I know what happens with the calendars. Yeah. Well, no, we just got to figure out a day we can shoot this. I'm trying to get it done before the end of January. So it's actually useful for people to use it as a calendar <laughs> and not just having sexy photos of me laying around their house. I mean, if that's what you dig, all for you, but uh, I'm trying to use it as a calendar. Yes. So we just got to get the photos done. You were talking about maybe behind the scenes footage. Yeah, and you we'll brought see what up, we could do here. You brought up the exact WWE Divas bikini shoot, how they had the video, home video of it. I saw you trying to meet her, the indie wrestling uh dot us network you might have sexy firefighter <laughs> behind the scenes me laying on a beach with sand all over me i don't know it's yet to be seen i, uh, I don't know what we can shoot in january so. i don't know <laughs> it's that warm we don't have snow so we can't cover me with snow instead of sand I, i'm sure they have snow somewhere yeah that's true <laughs> we just go north young man <laughs> uh <laughs> all right other than twerking and uh and and your gear uh you're, you're uh, what, over two years into wrestling at this point? No, just over a year. On shows, I, I started uh, training and uh, had my trial in September, started training October 2016, debuted September 2017. Yeah. So I've been officially a wrestler for only a year and, and a spare, handful of months. Chains, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so tell me a little bit about your experiences so far. Anything that uh six out uh what's your favorite match so far my favorite match was actually in a dive bar in butt fuck nowhere west virginia <laughs> and it was me and hooven in a pony ring against beast man wait what yeah so <laughs> wait, 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 wait. wait what is a pony ring a pony ring is a ring a smaller ring it's not as high as the normal ring is uh, oh like like the midget ring yeah okay and uh we were in a bar Oh, wow. And it didn't start until 
12 o'clock or 11 o'clock at night because there oh. was two bands on before the wrestling started the good old wrestling started and then this is ambitious yeah so it's mean hooven it's like a redneck gathering of the juggalos yes mean hooven who's a very very one of my best friends against beast man mm-hmm. <laughs> and i'm having the time of my life i am instigating i am uh just trying to poke on people's nerves and tug on their uh, heartstrings a little bit with my sexiness. And uh, Beast Man comes out and I got my ass kicked. Mm-hmm. And because Beast Man is no joke. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm laying in the ring. Did the ring survive Beast Man? I don't know how mean who survived <laughs> Beast Man. <laughs> so, um, so I'm laying in the ring. And I just feel a chair get chucked, like, and this is like an old school, like middle school chair that's not connected to the desk, and it gets chucked like over the, the top, like rope. with the metal and everything. Yeah, yeah, okay. It hits me in the knee. I shoot up, and I see the next one coming for my head. I drop down, like did like a little gimmick over Hooven and got the hell out of there because I ain't getting hit in the head with one of those things in a dive bar in the middle of butt fuck nowhere West Virginia <laughs> it is not worth it so I got out and I'm in pain wait, wait the chairs were coming from Beastman or the, or the crowd Beastman Beastman okay uh it was one of those welcome to the business kid <laughs> threw it in and uh so uh I'm stumbling out Beast Man comes back through the curtain and knocks my ass out outside the ring. <laughs> the outside of the ring felt better than inside the ring. <laughs> but um no, uh it was the best, the most fun experience I've ever had in wrestling. The cast and crew that went down there that night, uh just to paint a picture, LaRusso, me, Laura, Hooven, oh, Laura Loveless, and Jinx mm-hmm. went down and then we roll up to the venue and it's a dive bar and I loved it. The crowd was good. Uh, it was fun. You know, it doesn't have to be 5,000 people in a big arena to be fun. Mm-hmm. The little ones matter just as much. It's it, one of my most memorable moments that I've had so far. That's awesome. So what are you um, kind of watching these days that's kind of uh, uh, giving you any inspiration in Uh, wrestling? I've been watching. I don't watch a lot of WWE. I love watching all wrestling. Mm -hmm. I like the old stuff. I love watching Dusty Rhodes. Mm -hmm. Uh, Similar body types. I'm not. I'm. God hope I'm as charismatic as he is. But um, uh, Dusty Rhodes and Ric Flair is fun to watch. I've been watching Shawn Michaels uh, just because he's my favorite wrestler of all time, and he's so much fun to watch. Uh, I just sat down. WWE released the uh, unreleased Shawn Michaels matches DVD, mm. and it's a lot. I like watching the house shows and the dark matches and stuff like that because you can learn a lot about character and how to uh, how to really like get the crowd invested by what you do Mm -hmm. because they're not as restricted as it is on tv yeah they're playing towards the crowd and not the not the not not the the cameras cameras. yeah yeah because when in when you're working towards tv you're working for the camera not the crowd and it's Mm -hmm. vice versa like you said um and it and like i like to watch that stuff i like to watch stuff that you've rarely seen uh old stuff and then i watch like new japan's tonight i'll probably watch a match or two or a couple whenever it comes out later on uh, New Japan World. Uh, I like watching IndieWrestling.us. Not-so-shameful plug. Uh, because <laughs> um, you, you travel up and down the road with these guys, and you mm-hmm. can ask them. You can show them, what did I do wrong? What did I do right? Why mm-hmm. did you do this? Why did you do that? So I like to watch my trainers, Chris LaRusso and Andrew Palace, And... Uh, Flexer and Marshall, they're all fun to watch. That's awesome. So uh, what is the best and the worst thing about indie wrestling for you so far in your young career? The best thing is firefighting is just like wrestling in the sense of brotherhood. We uh, go up and down the roads Mm -hmm. uh, on the weekends or whenever it is, 
and you form a bond with these people and they become your closest friends. And that's the best part is just all the friends that I've made. It's like an extended family. Uh, the worst part, and I watched Man Dimes and uh, Elijah Deans and Stevie LaBelle's interview, and I will second what they said. Andrew Palace's cardio <laughs> sucks. <laughs> it is god awful, and not in the sense that it's not working, but it sucks in the sense that it works too much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, it just makes you better. He just wants the best for everyone mm-hmm. that comes through the ICWA. And yeah, uh, Andrew Palace cardio sucks. There's a reason why he's able to do all those laps around the ring when he yeah, comes out. I would be. I remember we're in Clearfield, and I run around the ring. And I bend over, and you get the camera, and I'm like, Sorg, I'm blown up. <laughs> yeah, because I think like it, it was like multiple people. You were getting individual introductions, right? Yeah. And we we're waiting for the next guy. Yeah. And, I, and, and I'm and i just like, well, we're going to get you and have you react on, hey, here's my partner. And then I'm just like, oh, no, he's not doing good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was fine. I'm uh, just like, oh, no, he's just like, he's just waiting. And he's like, oh, no, he's he's he, he's heaving. I, I need to <laughs> give him a second. Yes. Uh, no. I think I gave you a look like, don't worry, this is going to look cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was aiming for. I'm like, how funny would it be if I'm like, if I just say into the camera, I am blown up. <laughs> but uh, that's what we have Andrew Palace cardio for. There you go. It's just, <laughs> we just like a video of Andrew Palace workout. And it's just like all the ring runs. You remember the uh, Triple H and Stephanie McMahon workout DVDs that they came out with? Maybe I did not watch ago? them, but I remember that they did those. We need to come out with an Andrew Palace cardio DVD, like an indie wrestling network special with Andrew Palace in the gym. You know, we've done some training videos, and, you know, uh, refereeing one with uh, with Joe Dabrowski and Jimmy Carderas, and there was a uh, Lucha, Lucha Libre one we just did with DJ Z a few months ago. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe maybe this should be the thing, like the indie fitness like angle should be part of it. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> we'll see. We'll, we'll work on it. Hey, I, I'm open to new new things to try for the network. Uh, whatever you guys are into, so awesome. As you said the the worst thing. What, what was the best thing about wrestling? Oh no, wait, said that we did that already. Yeah, that the, was the brotherhood. The, yeah, awesome, um, awesome. So, <laughs> where can people find you online? So, and and where 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 are those places that they will find out that uh, the calendar will be released? Uh, I will post it. I usually post on uh, what is it? Uh, the Twitter machine. I usually post on there. More often than not, Mm -hmm. on Facebook, I am 5AF Jason Tyler because they have that at logo now. I'm sure if you just type in Jason Tyler, it'll work. Mm -hmm. Um, Instagram is Jason Tyler 5AF. Twitter is Jason Tyler 5AF. Snapchat is Jason Tyler 5AF. Uh, They can slide into your snaps. Yes. uh, I, I probably won't Snapchat you back personally if I don't know you. Some guy from uh, Florida has been sending me stuff, and I'm just like, he's like, if this weirds you out, it's fine. I'm like, no, you're fine, because I post all my like upcoming matches on there, because mm-hmm. you know how you go on Snapchat and you'll see stories that you haven't read, and you like push on it just to get it out of the way. Yeah, I can put my matches on there. Yeah, P- people don't want to see my ugly face anyways, but they're gonna have to on Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> Good philosophy, and you can do the same thing on Instagram too. Yes. So. Uh, taking advantage of everything. Yes. Awesome. Uh, and where do you generally, uh, well, generally, where do you, where do you pop up? To... Twitter. No, I'm, I'm sorry. What promotions are you popping up? Oh at? yeah. So IWC and two PW. That mm-hmm. is, that's pretty much all it is right now. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I'm pretty sure we said it. And random, STDs. and random dive bars in, in West Virginia. Not as much anymore. I hope so. You hope so. I want to go back to that dive bar. Listen, if you're Hoogan. running a dive bar within driving distance of Pittsburgh, hit up Jason Tyler AF. <laughs> I want to rematch with Beastman with Dan Hooven as my partner. Wait, was it a handicap match? It was a handicap match. Yeah, me and who? It was, he beat both of our asses simultaneously. Oh, huh. huh. and that's why Beastman is Beastman. <laughs> I want to rematch with Hooven, and I need another partner because obviously we don't do the job. Right. <laughs> so we need jamie jameson or we need freaking johnny patch someone someone well, i think brohim just had a tree chucked at him so maybe he can help you out yeah i, ch- I tried <laughs> chuck i was doing a show in ohio and i tried chucking someone into a tree it didn't work oh no no he, th- he threw the tree at brohemoth 
oh, was it Black Diamond? Yeah. The Christmas yeah. Uh, show? I saw gifts of that. Yep. I, I, yeah. I missed the first one. <laughs> the first hit. The first hit. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there was bits of tree all over the place as they were doing post show, but it was, yeah. it was interesting. That tree didn't survive. No. Anyways, Jason Tyler, thank you so much. The five alarm fire, sexy fireman calendar coming soon with background video, maybe coming to indie wrestling social media as well. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Start Who a knows? fire in your heart and a fire in your pants. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're doing a commercial on the podcast for that when that gets done. I love wrestling. Oh man. <laughs> it's not always just the wrestling it's just the stuff around wrestling sometimes yeah. right <laughs> thank you so much and you guys please support him check him out on the twitter and of course you can see uh, a lot of his matches over on um indie wrestling.us and the uh 2pw stuff is exclusive to the indie wrestling network go check it out www.indywrestling.network start your free trial today if you haven't checked that out yet and uh, see some more awesome wrestling action. So thank you so much to him, uh, to, to, him to everybody that's been in the chat room uh, that's joining us here live on Facebook Live as we record this here early in January. And until the next time, please support in the rest. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Dot com.